I'm Cal Day, SVP of Products and Engineering at Cloud and Network Services. Thank you for joining our Nokia Core Talk. I am very pleased today to welcome Matthias Sauda, VP and Director of Networks at Telefonica Germany. Welcome, Matthias. Thank you. So to start off, um, I'd like to congratulate Telefonica Germany um, on the very innovative step of transitioning to uh, your 5G core to the AWS cloud. Uh, I think that's a very forward-looking approach in the telecom industry. So my first question is, could you tell us about um, Telefonica Germany's strategic vision and how this transition aligns with that vision? Yeah, first of all, thank you. I think it's, it's teamwork. It's something what we did together, together with the AWS guys. And uh, I think it's one of the first deployments of a brownfield operator. And uh, so I'm super happy about uh, this whole thing, uh, the whole journey where we have been on for quite a while. Uh, and it resonates very well because it's really part of our vision of Telefonica, uh, Germany's vision to cloudify. Uh, what does it mean? It means really to disaggregate every function and uh, to put everything what is possible into the cloud. It sounds maybe silly, but we really believe in this step because it, it should give us freedom. It should have give us possibilities to automate. Um, it will help us also to cope with all the challenges that you have because, I mean, we are an operator serving more than 44 million customers in Germany and the hunger of data uh, or getting data, using data, is not stopping. So that means we have also, on a day-to-day -day basis, question our operating model. We have to look for opportunities to challenge ourselves and actually to turn the challenges which our customers pose to us, uh, to turn us really in opportunities. And the whole vision uh, to go for cloud, and actually my boss said once at Mobile World Congress, go cloud or go home. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's provocative, but I think this is really what we believe in and where we think we can change the world. And it's nice to have partners like Nokia or AWS to be on this journey and um, yeah, to rock the boat a bit, but on the other hand, to deliver something um, reasonable, sensible to our customers, because it's all about our customers. Fantastic. Uh, super uh, excited for you guys and excited to work with you. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so Matthias, my second question is, what exactly motivated Telefonica Germany to transition the 5G core to AWS? I mean, uh, it's part of our transformation project. And uh, it doesn't mean that we don't talk to the other hyperscalers. But in this case, we found really Mindshare with AWS. We find it, found it with uh, Nokia. And um, it's part of uh, the game to modernize our infrastructure, to um, look at other systems, where do we want to place them. And, and there are also other systems which you place, for example, in the Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we found uh, AWS the most suitable platform. Mm -hmm. um, it gives us really uh, the possibilities to deploy rapidly, to scale, uh, to be efficient. Uh, it's green, it's about resiliency. But there's another thing which is super important once you want to operate in Europe. It has to be super secure. Um, it has to provide certain features, certain capabilities, and um, and then it's also about agility, automation, uh, scalability. And I think in the collaboration model with, uh, with Nokia, we found really that this was the best partnership. So it's a triangle, and it's usually not easy to form sure. triangles and to make them work. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it worked perfectly. We are scaling up now. We want to have in summer 1 million customers uh, sitting on the platform. And I think also we found partners in crime uh, to change in the industry because it's a constant in our industry. Yeah. We have to be efficient, um, we have to be fast, and um, we really want also to, I said earlier, rock the boat, but it's also a bit about inspiration, believing in innovation and into change. And I think in this partnership, we found what we were looking for, and we are super happy about it. Fantastic, that's a, that's a great rationale, great story. How do you um, envision the innovation of you know new services, uh, and how does that, you know, like, improve TTM, time to market, with this new cloud-based infrastructure? What advantages do you get? 
I mean, um, let's maybe lo not look at the cloud, but I, I'm, I'm, I just realized today I'm already 30 years in this industry. Mm. Um, I mean, in the past, it was always uh, build a platform, test the platform, put the software on it, test the software, and it took you easily half a year, a year, until you could serve your customers. Absolutely. And now it's like this. So that means you can uh, put your software, you can work in CLCD. We are testing even now uh, ISSU, so mm -hmm. really in lifetime updates, um, without any customer impact. Mm -hmm. and, and those kind of things you just get if you go to cloud. And um, it's also something what, what you guys use, now the programmability of the 5G core. You can develop d uh, new thingies in, in really with the snip of a finger, and we can get them to our customers. And, and I think this is the huge opportunity in this game to say, okay, I'm not waiting for anything. I have a demand. I want to have something new. I want to have new capabilities for my customers. And in this partnership, we can deploy, uh, first develop and then deploy in, uh, I would not say minutes, but uh, it will not take longer than a week or two weeks until we have something, if, if you want to change something. And uh, we will also um, look at the new opportunities. I mean, it's a hype now, AI. Um, but it's definitely something which will come into this game and which will help us to improve actually what we deliver to our customers. And I think uh, going cloud, uh, going for all the capabilities of cloud is something what makes us future-proof and which yeah. helps us to serve customers better. No. And now uh, one question back from my side uh, to sure you. Thing. I mean, you're, you're helping us big time in this transformation. And mm -hmm. Um, but looking at the transformation, what are your next really visionary steps from the Nokia side, and particularly also the topic AI? How, which kind of role will AI play in, uh, on this journey? Yeah, completely. So, um, so thank you, number one, for your insights, um, and you know, uh, thanks for the question. I uh, would love to share how uh, we're taking this journey together in a collaborative way. So our next steps, uh, you know, to your question, are will be in the direction of enhancing network automation, right? Um, and there, I think, you know, where we're going to focus on is um, areas like optimizing performance um, and really leveraging AI for sort of advanced solutions that help manage and scale network operations, in particular, right? So um, we've made some progress in uh, developing, um, I'm going to say, AI-powered tools and capabilities um, that really provide real-time insights and take you know, like automation to a more predictive set of capabilities. So if we think about maintenance um, or network optimization, um, as we take the journey towards um, truly autonomous networks versus networks that are just automated, Right, mm -hmm. which is you know like a precursor to true uh, autonomy, so to speak. Um, we envision AI playing a pivotal role in our strategy going forward. Right. So uh, what we expect is that you know these capabilities will enable networks to uh, self-heal, which is you know like uh, I will say that's a vision. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a north star goal. Um, but you and I both know the enormous amount of lift and pain that goes into, you know, maintenance and operations. And uh, even with eyes on glass, uh, you know, it's a problem that is uh, in excess of what I think is possible through manual labor and human scale alone. Mm. So that's where we, you know, expect and hope that AI will make a real difference in helping um, not only adapt to changing conditions, but eventually get to a point where it anticipates uh, what the user's needs are. Um, and thereby able to assure um, a much higher level of reliability than what is possible today, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, just one reply on, the, on this question. Um, I was always smiling in, in 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when people talked about SON, self-optimizing networks, and there was also the slogan of self-healing. And in the beginning, I was always smiling and said, yeah, pff, it's not possible. Yeah, right. But eventually, uh, if you really look what happened since then, it's possible. I mm -hmm. mean, you have it now in radio network. Right. You have self-healing capabilities. And I would expect the same thing now happening in core networks. And this would be uh, really the next big thing. And I'm not smiling anymore. I'm looking forward to get it. <laughs> right. It's a smile of Anticipation. Exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. Fantastic. So um, I have to ask you, um, 
why Nokia? You know, Telefonica's choice to partner with us. I'd love to know a little bit about that. I mean, there's for, for sure one component about people. Now, this is for sure when you find people uh, who share what uh, you share your vision, you, you, uh, sh uh, who share actually the hunger for innovation. And this is what we found in, in Nokia, in Core, in the, in the whole organization. We found many, many people. Uh, it starts really from sales up to engineering level, up to uh, the highest possible management level, leadership. And uh, so we found the mind share. And uh, we, we, we all said we want to do this. Now this was really, this was not just we would like and we let's explore, let's do a POC. It was more, we want to do this. Yeah. We, we want to deliver. And there we are. And, um, and then it comes really to the architecture. I mean, uh, you guys built something which is secure, it's cloud native, it's, it's, a core, it's a core really which fits perfectly into public cloud. It's robust, it's scalable. Um, and yes, most likely we have to look at uh, performance once we have the customers on it. But nevertheless, uh, you have proven it's possible also with, with a greenfield operator already. So this is also part of the track record. Mm -hmm. And um, we have worked with many operators, um, not just operators, but also with uh, providers. And um, I think Nokia is close to our heart, uh, particularly the core and transport side. And uh, from this perspective, I think we found somebody who can help us to seamlessly integrate into AWS. Um, important, most, more importantly, we are working in Europe. So Europe wants to have data in Europe. There are regulations. Um, we have to make sure that it stays there. We have to make sure that it's encrypted. And in collaboration, Nokia and AWS, we got what we needed. And um, from an automation perspective, we are exploring now what, what's possible. We get this from you guys. Uh, you help us. You are more, more than an ideal partner for this project. And uh, actually, it's also a bit co-creation. Co so this is really about um, sharing a vision, but then also I mean, a vision without a plan is nothing. Now that it's just a vision, it's something on paper, PowerPoint. Here it was more how to plan it, how to make it happen, how to get it to the customers. And this is going to happen in, in the next days, so to say. I mean, we, we have customers on it, but now let's scale it. And uh, really looking forward to it. And that's why, Nokia. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very kind and generous of you. Uh, as are we, looking forward to it. And we, you know, we think of um, our you know, valued, deep, uh, trusted customer relationships is also an opportunity for design partnerships. So definitely yeah, looking absolutely. forward to, um, you know, more opportunities to, you know, kind of envision the future together and then, as you say, very correctly, realize it together. And so, um, uh, you know, in that spirit of kind of looking ahead a little bit, um, what new uh, consumer, you know, B2B customer use cases um, are you thinking about, do you envision with your new enhanced network capabilities. Yeah, and I hope there will be many because I mean, this is a topic, the hottest topic in our industry. What can we monetize? How can we change the game from just right. selling connectivity? Yeah. What else? What else can we provide to customers? And I mean, it starts, we talk, talked a lot about Open Gateway uh, API exposure uh, with the NEF, with the network exposure function. And um, we talk also for years, actually, uh, that the user pain function has to move closer to the customer in order to explore new use cases which are based on low latency. Mm -hmm. This might be for slices for enterprise customers, but this might be also for gaming or possibilities for consumers. Right. Um, and all those kind of things are getting possible now. Um, when we look at B2B, uh, and we are really selling it already, it's slicing, it's automation, it's slicing, um, and they are really dedicated network se segments for dedicated enterprise applications. And uh, it might be not super fancy sometimes, sometimes it's really just IoT, and it, it's sometimes just for water providers right. that they measure, that they can read their sensors, but mm -hmm. it has to be reliable. Yeah. Um, simple things, not consuming a lot of bandwidth, but really, safe and secure transmission of data and put a slice for this. It might be MBB. I mean, we are heading towards the European Soccer Championship. Those kind of use cases where you have MBB slices um, in order to serve cameras. Um, 
And we can also look to healthcare, where we also partner with uh, certain hospitals uh, right. to try out new things. And all those kind of things, they are getting now really, really possible. So, I mean, in 5G, we, we have now almost fifth birthday in Europe uh, deploying 5G. But now all those kind of things becoming reality. And, and this is something where this uh, deployment in the cloud really, really helps because it will make us faster and we don't have to wait a year until we can explore new opportunities. And I think this is the beauty of this concept. Amazing, amazing. Mm. So let's talk a little bit about um, the concept of collaboration, right? So, um, so as, as you know, you folks at Telefonica Germany are sort of you know marching down this path uh, on you know your journey of innovation. Um, how would you say you see this transition to the cloud, all right, and cloud-based infrastructure? How does that you know? impact and motivate collaboration with other industry partners and stakeholders? I mean, uh, we see this everywhere. This, uh, this reshapes are actually the whole landscape. Yeah. Um, we see this on the IT side in our IT transformation because all the new BSS systems are moving or moved already to the cloud. So there is no monolithic infrastructure anymore. Yeah. Um, and you get a complete different partner ecosystem when it comes to SIs, when it comes to uh, actually companies helping you on the journey. Um, it's also the relationship with you guys. Um, would we have thought about uh, to talk to Nokia having um, an Ericsson packet core already deployed? So, but in, 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 in the cloud era, it's not just uh, that you have one partner and you're married forever. You can have many partners for many right. different purposes. Um, and you can also look who brings most innovations to the ta uh, on the table. Right. Um, so that means there is a chance for us also to explore different partnerships, to reshape partnerships. Also, who, have, who would have thought that Nokia comes as a software provider? Uh, so because no Nokia was known for hardware components, yes, a bit of software on top, and you get a fully reliable system. But now uh, Nokia comes uh, in the cloud era as a software provider. And it's, it's a complete different partnership. Absolutely. It's also a different uh, kind of um, conversation which we are having now. And all those kinds of, uh, kind of things are happening. And we expect now also, once we have network exposure function deployed, uh, open gateway, all those kind of things that we talk now also to application developers and that also other kind of people are joining us to develop uh, new things. And my personal hope is also uh, being also accountable for transport and radio, and that I get also third party developers helping me to optimize the radio network. So also things where you had to buy solutions, where I would like to have partners helping us to solve certain use cases. And I think we will see the same then, uh, in the, uh, particularly on the automation, making use of the new core solutions. I, I see a huge potential uh, for our future. Super inspiring. Yeah. Matthias, uh, thank you so much for this interesting discussion and your time today. And I'm looking forward to uh, our continued collaboration, cooperation, and what will the magic that we'll do together. Thank you very much. So uh, folks, this uh, concludes our Nokia Core Talk, and uh, thank you for your time today. <laughs>